Welcome back to Wrestling Unhinged Video. This has been a while since we've done this. It's been like, like a month, a month maybe since we've done one. Um, but we are back now uh, with an interview that you will see in a second. Um, we have interviews. We had it. We have one now, tomorrow. As we're going. Saturday. Day. And big then, thing coming Monday. We can't yeah, do it. We're not going to say that yet, but on Monday we've got a big thing coming. Um, but I, as a recording, you should see this tonight or you got tomorrow. Probably like tomorrow morning if you don't see it tonight. Um, with Liam Slayer. Uh, I'll put like a clips, like clips of the matches he's done before, like right after this. So people like Cody Rhodes, it's just one name to even say. Um, but yeah. I don't think you need to mention the name after that. Like, honestly, you see, you see Cody Rose and it's like, oh, that's fine. You don't, you don't need us anywhere else. But the other guys are like Pete Dunne, Will Osprey, uh, Drew Galloway, or Drew McIntyre. Um, so he has named the top. He has wrestled the top top guys. So yeah, but enjoy the interview and then get ready for like three more after this. A packed schedule that we're bringing. And then, and then hopefully we're back on the. Uh, the podcast like the weekly shit and then more stuff like that but yeah enjoy the video and we're back hello you alright you alright Matt I'm good thanks how are you two doing yeah we're right. good we're good should we just uh, get right into it or... yeah sure. how's my audio am I okay uh, yeah it's good yeah yeah, 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 yeah good. good 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 uh well we'll just we'll just get right into it. Um we'll we'll start from the beginning then, before the training. What inspired you to become a professional wrestler? Um so I'd always been interested in wrestling from like a really young age. It was pretty much the the thing for me. Um we were looking recently through like some of my old like childhood stuff. Um and like in primary school there's um, there's like little books and like that, that I've made of me like learning to write, but writing WWF on them. Um, oh yeah. So like I've been interested in wrestling since I was I'll have been six, seven ish, uh, and then it's just been a, a passion through that. I never thought that I'd be able to be in wrestling. Um, yeah. But I, I have always had an interest in it, and it was just it's, it's honestly just been a, a case of I'll give that a go. And then something happens. It's like, oh, I'll push that. And then something happens. So it's all just sort of being a little bit chancy, really. But yeah, for me, it's it started from when I was when I was a little kid, a real little kid. So do you have like a favorite? What's your like favorite as a wrestler? Oh, sorry, what favorite? What sorry? Yeah, your favorite moment. Like, okay, as me as me as a wrestler. Yeah. Um. Oh, so hold on a second, I think. Um, I think I've got a couple. Um, so there's a couple of like big moments that I like. I will go to when I speak about wrestling. So yeah, things like ITV World of Sport stuff will always like stand out as like oh cool, like I did that. Um, like being on what culture and wrestling, some of the big names there that will always stand out for me. Um, in terms of like little favorite moments, um the match that I had with Rampage Brown, uh, well, the two matches I had with Rampage Brown at title, the first one where I won the belt was a pretty cool moment. Title for me was like one of the first like main indies that sort of took me on. So to be given that opportunity to have that belt was huge. Um, but then I got knocked out when I won the belt. So, you know, it, it, it led on further. Uh, and then the second match was a last man standing match where the title fans have been asking for me to go down this lift for a while. They'd been shouting like in the lift as a chant to every wrestler that went next to this disabled lift in the in the venue. Um, yeah. So on that match, I was like, I'm going in that lift. Like that <laughs> lift is mine. Um, so he, he lifts me, suplexes me down. It, um, and it was just, for me, that was, that's a cool little, personal moment where I was just like, yeah, this is this is cool. This is what wrestling is, really. So, yeah, I'd go with those as, as moments for myself. 
Uh, I was going to ask this yet, but it, it ties in well. Obviously, you, you mentioned Rampage. What is like your personal favourite match of all time that you've been in? Obviously, you've been in the, the ring with some big names like Cody Rhodes, Rampage. What would be your favourite? Um, so I think like like I mentioned, like the Cody Rhodes match is like is the is the easiest one for me to go to in terms of yeah yeah like I wrestled this guy like when people talk about when I talk to people about wrestling. It's very easy to be like, Cody. And they're Cody. like, oh, yeah, he was on WWE. That's cool. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm terrible with, like, favourite things. Um, yeah. I don't have, like, a favourite thing. I just have moments and stuff that I enjoy. Um, so there wouldn't be really one that stands out. The Zack Sabre Jr. match um, at What Culture that, that led on to the Cody match, for me, was a... That, w- that match is what I wanted to be as a wrestler and what I wanted to bring to wrestling. Um, and I feel like I not I probably didn't put myself in a position where I could do more of that. So to be given that match, I was like, we're going in. And like, I'm doing this and we're, we're going to at all. Um, so yeah, I would say that's probably a favourite match of mine. So like, to you, it's probably like surreal. Like you've wrestled all these people, like you said, like Cody and uh, the likes of Pete Dunn, Tyler Bay, Will Ospreay. Is there anyone you still want to like face is anyone you like? Oh, I would love to face this guy down the line, or to be in the ring with this person. Yeah, loads of people. So yeah, like on that, like I was um, speaking to someone the other day where um, Kirby Mania for WCPW that was mm-hmm. in Liverpool. I was in a six-man tag where it was me, Johnny Moss, who's a NXT a UK coach, and Drew Galloway um, against well Drew McIntyre now, who's WWE champion. I'm like, yeah, I just tagged up with them um, against Swords of Essex, um, Paul Robinson, Scotty Wainwright, and Bully Ray. And I was like, what a ridiculous thing! Like, <laughs> Bully Ray was like, he was being on TV and like held such a big spot in like, especially when I was coming into wrestling. Um, and I bumped him. I'm like, sweet, <laughs> <laughs> it's cool for me. Like, um, so yeah, in terms of people that I'd like to wrestle, that like, again, it's been a, it's a hard one, is that because. I don't think there's anybody that I particularly like go like, oh yeah, like this guy. That um, number one. Yeah, like it's it, it's a mix of people. Um, I I would love to. I'd love to be able to get in. I've wrestled him before, but to be able to wrestle Chris Ridgeway again, um, with the experience and the the stuff that he's picked up being out in Japan, I think that our match now would be loads better than it has been in the past. So he's probably like my guy that I'm like, I'd just love to step back in the ring with him again because he's just, he's a really cool guy. We get on really well. Um, but I just think match-wise, we, we've we always had good chemistry and I think it'd be even better now. Yeah. Uh, so we'll go back to like the start. What, what, what age did you start training to become a professional wrestler and how was like the start like with training? So I started when I was 17. Um, I was in college. I just had a part-time job. Uh, my girlfriend at the time had just started driving, so I had a ways and means of getting there. I found it through Fighting Spirit magazine, where there was an advert for UKW in it, and it just said at the bottom, um, Wrestling Academy. I was like, oh, this is really close to me. Like This is like on my doorstep. Um, because before that point, the only like wrestling school, I don't know why I put that in quotation marks, the only wrestling school in the UK um, was All Star in Liverpool. And I was like, I guess I'll just have to go there at some point. Um, so when there was one like in Wakefield, I'm like, sweet, let's go. Um, so with that, the place was called the Thunder Dome um, because it's wrestling and why wouldn't it be? Yeah. Um, we turned up, it was in an industrial park. We were a bit like, is this the place? It's funny because as a kid, I'd been pretty much in that area on a bike ride. So as we were going into it, I was like, this looks really familiar. I really recognize that post office. And it's because like I'd already been there. Um, so yeah, we went in, in this warehouse. It had, UKW has a 20 foot ring, which is pretty unusual for like UK wrestling. Yeah. Um, so we walked in, um, big 20 foot ring. There was another room there, just people like in and around. It, it was already set up. UKW has always been good for having like an arena set up. Um, so yeah, I walked in. I was like, "Oh, cool! Like this is wrestling." And I got in and basically just went through my first training session. I was like, "This is sick!" I didn't really have any plans of like 
doing it long term or anything like that. It's just something that I wanted to do. Um, and then it was just like, I guess I'll come back again next week. And then, what, nine years later, here I am still wrestling. So, yeah, it was just sort of a continuation of stuff like that. But I had no real, outside of watching Tough Enough as a kid, I had no real idea about what the process of wrestling was. So I just went, yeah. you know, did it, I guess. Was there anyone that like, inspired you to keep going? Like, maybe like when you were young, you were like, oh, I can't do it anymore. I don't want to do it. And was there anyone that was like, no, come on, you can do it. And inspired you to keep going with it. Um, so I've always been really fortunate in that wherever I've been, there's always been like a really good group of like trainers or like there's been a good couple of people in charge. So one of the things for me when I was first starting out is when I was like pretty much at the point where I was ready to go on shows. Um, I'm I'm not really like a big social person, uh, like and especially I'm better now. Um, so like obviously through wrestling and then my job as a PT, I've had to become like more of a people person. But at that point when I was seventeen, uh, going what well, seventeen eighteen, I wasn't at all. So I didn't really have those connections. Um, so UKW was the place that we were training. I'd had a couple of training matches, um, and GBW was this like little company that had been set up by a couple of guys it was running in leeds and middlesbrough because why wouldn't you run those two towns like they're yeah. close together obviously um they were not um so i had a lot of people that i was training with that were getting on those shows and i was a bit like well if they're getting on those shows and i'm just sat at home looking at the photos being uploaded maybe it's not for me um, and I think with that, I'd never really had a conversation with anybody about it. It wasn't like I'd gone to someone and gone like, I'm going to give this up. But I just like, at the time, I had guys like Rampage, who'd come back from America and like he was at um, UKW, Prince Amin, um, Val Cabius was a guy that was training there. We had Chris Travis as well at one point, like he was stacked, like to look back at it and think about the trainers that I had at that point in time, I was like, it was an excellent time to be there. Um, so just having those people there that were always really encouraging and like um, Travis was really big on like having him, like he was like, he said to John the owner, he's like, I want to have a match with him at some point. And that sort of, that kept me going in a sense. Um, it kept me pushing forward and going, well, I might not be on these shows yet, but there's good things that are going to happen. And I think I sort of, biding my time a little bit and I ended up on the, those GBW shows and actually I like I, I won their main belt um, and the people that got onto them early sort of lost the passion for training because they got on shows they got it they got um, it too early uh, yeah that's that's exactly it they got it too early so they ended up stopping training whereas I was like I am going and I am keeping training and that's yeah, the goal yeah like it's always been one thing of mine is that like you've got to be training if because if you're not training then you shouldn't be on shows really um so yeah that that like the people around me were the people that kept me going uh you obviously mentioned that do you have like a worse setback in your career or like an injury that's really just made you consider like what like if you should be doing this anymore uh so i've been dead fortunate that touch wood I have never been injured. And I think that's because I play quite a safe style in that I know my abilities. I know what I'm good at. I know what I'm not good at. Um, I don't do shooting star presses because I can't do them. Maybe on a trampoline, but in a wrestling ring, not a chance. Uh, and it, it was silly stuff like we practice moonsaults. And like I could guarantee if we ever practice a moonsault, yes, I could do them. But more often than not, I would smash my toe onto the mat and it would kill. And I was just like, you know what? it's not no. worth doing um so i mean for me like i had a bit of time out um end of 2017 going into 2018 i stepped away from wrestling went more into uh, personal training and that's just because i was burnt out with it uh, and i was losing the passion for it um i had like stuff going on personally that I had a massive effect into it um and that that was the biggest step away that I, i'd had where I realised that I needed to come away from wrestling or like I was sort of going like I'm just going to have to come away from it I can't keep doing this uh, and honestly it's probably one of the best things that I ever did because it allowed me to 
to get my adult life set and sorted to the point now where I can have a balance of them both and, and do both and I'm actually quite in control and wrestling's become enjoyable again. Or it was enjoyable again before we had locked down. Yeah. So how has like lockdown been since obviously no one's like all the wrestling has like kind of stopped and before that. So how has lockdown been for you? It's been a mixed bag. Um, so like I said, I'm a personal trainer. So in terms of my work, I went from being in a gym, being in there all day, you know, clients and sessions and all that sort of stuff to not being able to go to my place of work um, to have a lot of people finish up because they didn't know when they would be able to exercise again. I had people that were like, we'll stick with you because we appreciate you and we appreciate what you've done for us. Um, but then I wanted to give them something because they were still putting money into me. So in the beginning point, I was really stressed out. Um, likewise, I'd like change around my programming. I'm like, right, I've got this and this and this at home so I can do this. Uh, and then just had a breakdown because I was like, I just can't, I don't want to work out. So I spent a good three weeks at the beginning of the lockdown, just sort of like sat pottering around, not really knowing what to do with myself, trying to get something in place. Um, but what it allowed me to do was focus on my, my online coaching side of stuff, get a system set in place. Um, I've had a chance to work with um, a good number of people now in an online platform and that's getting better and better. So it started out as quite a negative and it's become slowly more of a positive. Um, gyms are opening back up again, which means that I will have the opportunity to go back into work again. Um, so, I mean, overall, I can't complain about lockdown. I've had a pretty a pretty decent lockdown um you know like i've not while i have struggled work wise i've had the opportunity to work whereas people like hairdressers have just been sat there especially if they're independent and they're self-employed they've had to be sat there for four months not being able to earn um whereas at least i've had that opportunity to earn um so it's been it's been okay it, it's been all right i mean obviously it could have been better for in different respects but I've been doing all right. How have you guys been doing lockdown wise? Uh, like good, you said, good. Just, oh, like, you go um, first, Josh. I like you said really was just like at first, I was just sitting around and didn't know what to do really. And it was like, what what do we do? And we're in the house, can't do much. But now it's like kind of eased a bit. It has got like better. And that's why I think, well, that's why we started the whole wrestling and the injury. We're like, we don't want to just sit in the house and do nothing. So we're like, we're both watch wrestling a lot. Let's just start this, really. So it has, like you said, it has got better and it could have been worse. Yeah, yeah like, you, like, you've always got to look on the bright side of stuff. Like, it, cannot, it can always, the, not to be like there is always someone in the worst position, but like, we have to be aware of like how fortunate we are in certain aspects and stuff like that. And like, just even silly stuff, like we get the opportunity to be sat on a laptop speaking, you know, speaking freely and stuff like that. Yes. Yeah. It, you have to remind yourself of that or else you end up going stir crazy which again at the beginning of the lockdown I did because I was like this, I can't do anything like this is horrendous and like I had to have that down to then go actually Lee I'm like pull yourself up well that, that's how I look at it I look at it like the reason we're sitting here right now doing an interview for us and Hinge is because lockdown happened if not we we'll probably wouldn't be doing it so yeah, like, in, yeah, exactly. In terms of like my like coaching business, like I wouldn't have had that time to sit, set up systems, speak to people like on a daily basis about like. So, say for example, um, Ella, my girlfriend, like I got her set up on the system straight away, and I was like, give me feedback like straight away. Yeah. So we had that opportunity to work there. Um, Jake Silver, the pop punk kid, I messaged him and I was like, look, like I. I'd love to help you out in terms of, because we've always sort of chatted back and forth about like weight and stuff like that. Like, I want to help you out on this. I'm doing this. Give me as much feedback as you can out of it. So I wouldn't have had the opportunity without lockdown. I just, and like, it's going to change around how I operate my business, like in the gym as well and stuff like that. I'm definitely going to take some more time for myself. Like, this is the most sleep that I've ever had. Um, and I feel great for it. So I don't really want to give that sleep back up again. Yeah. Uh, obviously, you mentioned like how you were able to find a balance between training and life. At the start of like training, at the start of your career, was the balance always there, or was it not? Um, no, but that was intentional. Um, yeah. And I, I will honestly say that I wouldn't have got as far in wrestling if I hadn't have put those hours in. 
so uh, like this is this is my advice for people like you've got to be realistic about what you want to achieve and the time that you can put into it for me i was 17 18 with a part-time job um with no extra worries and stress of anything like i didn't have a house like my only bill that was going out was my mobile phone bill really i was in a very very comfortable position um and for me it was like right i'm just gonna go as much as i can so at some points i was like tuesday when no sorry monday wednesday thursday sometimes friday sometimes saturday on like a regular basis and then like but i'd work out like quite a nice deal with, with john and ukw um and then like i'd started doing like a little bit of coaching there as well just a little bit and then like i'd started to expand out to ngw over in hull and we had it was me dan james and sean only that would travel across like every week and i had the opportunity to travel across every week and like my part-time yeah. job was like really was they were very happy for me to do that they were like yeah sure we're like we can cover and stuff like that um and i didn't really care about uni i went, I went and studied broadcast journalism um not that i'm a broadcast journalist now um I'm, you know i'm a pt there's elements of it that still like cross over but for the most part like i did it because i was like i need to spend three years doing nothing so i can focus on wrestling um, yeah. like my graduation where everybody was like in the robes and shaking hands um i was in a car going up to scotland to wrestle for all star for a, a weekend on the camps um and that got last like last minute it was like the the camp run was on a tuesday and i got asked the thursday before it and i'm like yeah sure no worries i've not got anything on and then the monday i was like oh it's i do whoops never mind um so i just emailed um, my tutor at the time and was like yeah i'm not gonna be there to you so for me there wasn't the balance there but there didn't need to be the balance there and that's what allowed me to to prosper because i just went in and if you can go in you'll get way more out of it but now um now i need that balance because you know like i have things like a rent to pay and like I've yeah. got my daughter I like i need to spend time with ella my partner because i love her and like i want to spend time with her that way um you know and we want time away from wrestling she wrestles well but like we want that that balance and i found that when i stepped away it was actually quite nice having weekends and not thinking right we're here and here and then i'm back to work again so for me now yes that balance is there for me when i started it wasn't but it was intentional and i felt like i needed that to to go so um, so you were talking about the rest, and then you obviously you got announced for uh, full till Saturday Night Prime. Uh, what are your plans with that, and how far do you see like go, still continuing with that, like being not FT to uh, full tilt? So for me, like with the full tilt stuff, um, when he came out and asked me for it, I was like, yeah, sweet. Like I'm, I'd love to do it because I noticed that their stuff was getting better. Um, in terms of their production and stuff like that. And it was always like a solid little company. I think, did I do, no, no, there was another company that I did it with. Um, so it was a case of going, okay, let's let's do something. Um, I'd spoken to um, Jake Silver again, because he's wrestled there a good couple of times with Crash Boat. Um, and he always spoke highly of it. So I was like, yeah, sweet, let's, let's do it. For me, at full tilt, it's a good experience to work with some people that I might not have worked with previously um a lot of what i want to do at the moment is just is enjoy wrestling um and to get as much out of it so in terms of what that's going to look like i don't know but like the match that got announced before lockdown i can't remember oh sorry yes i can so it was me i want to say benji um and daz black if i i think i might have butchered his name there but i think i'm pretty sure that was it against more than hype and I was like, cool, I know Benji, but like, I don't know Daz. Um, he's a lad up in Scotland. So I looked up some of his stuff and I was like, oh, cool, that'd be fun to team with him. Um, and then I've watched like more than hype stuff with like OTT. And I was like, cool, like, this is a really good experience to like meet people that I've not met before and do some different things. Um, and also, like, I don't think I've ever wrestled in a six sided ring. So there yeah. was a part that was like, oh, cool, like, that'll be another thing that I can tick off, like almost TNA. <laughs> Uh, so obviously, uh, a, a lot of wrestlers like 
they sort of, some know like when they want to be done and just step back and then just go on to do other things. Obviously, you've got the personal training. Do you have a like an end goal to step back and just go? I just want to continue with personal training. So I I thought I'd had that. Um, I thought when it came to 2018 and me stepping away, I was like, that's it. I'm I'm good. Um, I'd always looked at when I was first starting out and like I'd see like these guys that like weren't training um, and would be booked on one show every three, three months because it was their mate or like it was someone that was still linked with and they rocked up and they were like oh yeah like back in my day I did this and this and this I'm like yeah but look at you now like look at the state of you. Yeah. and like I never wanted to be in that position and I was like if I'm not fully committed into this I don't want to be there and there's an element of it that I still feel like, am I fully committed into it? I think I found a better balance with it. And I think that I'm training on a regular basis that I can allow myself to do that stuff. Um, but for me, it was always a case of like, if I'm not fully committed into this, there are several lads that are fully committed into it that deserve that spot more than me. Um, so if it comes to a point where my bookings end, they dry up and I'm not really getting anything, then I think at that I'll just go, cool, I'll just train. I'll just train and enjoy myself that way. Um, I wouldn't want to be like hanging on, if that makes sense. Um, yeah. So for me, that it's going to be a case uh, if those bookings dry up, then I'll go, yep, yeah, cool, that's my, that's my time in wrestling. I'll, I'll see you later. And I'll be quite happy with that because I think this time around it's been a lot more about the fun and the enjoyment of it and wherever it goes is wherever it goes um if i get a chance to have some fun train and do all that stuff then i'm i'm good and i'm happy and like for everything that's happened on twitter and, and in the wrestling scene over the last couple of months which has been like heavy um but i think some good is coming out of that and from talks that i've had with people i definitely think there's there's more that i can do in wrestling outside of wrestling once i stop wrestling so wrestling three times in a row there, that would be good. But yeah, like, so I think now I will always have some involvement in it, whether it's in a wrestling ring or not, I don't know. So uh, you mentioned there, but like, uh, when you thought, oh, if I don't get booked, I might just that call it a day. Uh, what would you say the hardest part of being like a wrestler actually is? Um, I think it depends on the person as to, to what the hardest part would be. Um, so I, I, sorry, like, this is me being like a diplomatic PT of like, oh, it depends on the person. Um, but I think it does. So I think there's a couple of different categories that you can look at there. Um, I think one, sometimes the hardest bit about being a wrestler is being confident enough in your ability of being a character and being like a gimmick, for example, because I know there's a lot of people that end up being like this wishy-washy, like, well, I'm me but I you know I also do this as well and like that's been me and that is still is me to an extent um and I think that can be hard to fully commit into stuff um I think it can be hard to be in the right circles and, and find the right people and find ways and means of getting onto shows because you could be going and training and training and training um and just not being in the right circles can be a detriment to it um and then I think as well it's things like a, a debate that I have with myself a lot is a debate between are we working for the show or are we working for ourselves in a sense of I think I, I mean I would love to be in a position where I would turn up to a show wrestle a standard match in the um, like second match on the card that like elevates someone up and is just like yep I do my job and that's cool but then that's not the scene. The scene is like, you've got to make sure that you put yourself over because if you're not putting yourself over, you might not get asked back again. Um, and I know those promotions that look after people and keep them in that sense. But I do think that's a hard bit of like, I see wrestling from a show perspective of like, we want the show to go up like this. So it builds and it builds and it builds. And I think that's probably because of the era that I watched coming into it. Like, late 2000s where you've got your journeymen and stuff like that you've got your jobbers that put over people you know and it builds the crescendo and don't get me wrong like I love the indie style of wrestling I, like I've got more than enough PWG DVDs to prove that um, but it's heavy 
and I think sometimes when you look at it, it can be hard to distinguish between the two. I know I've gone a couple, down a couple of tangents there, but it's a, I think it's a wide spectrum of stuff to look at. I also think, sorry, just to, to cap that off, um, another thing, not for wrestlers, but for people that are training to wrestle, I think sometimes the realisation that actually just training is the point that I'm going to get to is hard. Um, and it's not particularly like a nice thing to say, like to go like, this is probably your limit, but sometimes it is. Sometimes people train and it's like, actually, you probably aren't capable of getting onto shows. Um, and I do feel like that's a really harsh thing to say. And I would never, I would never stop someone from training and wanting to get onto shows, but that's got to be a personal choice in there yeah. going actually is there a better role for me in wrestling and there's loads of roles there's loads of different things in wrestling um but yeah so i think that's a hard question to answer for yourself if you are in that position uh so obviously you, ha you and johnny master are tag team for quite a while what uh was there a, i know you said you didn't like doing favorites but obviously you've been a you and Johnny would have been in the ring with a lot of great tag teams, like the Coffee Brothers, Peter and Travis Banks, uh, Gracie and Archer. Would the, it Was there a favourite, or like was the one that you just clicked with more, if you get what I mean? Yeah, so, I mean, in terms of a favourite match, I would go with um, the WCPW Delete show that was the culmination of the Adam Pachiti Tag Tournament. Um, or the APTT, where we won the belt, so we were like the first champions. Um, so for me, like that's a bit of a standout one. That was against the Coffees, um, you know, and that was just a nice thing of me going like, oh shit, like I'm actually like I'm actually a person like on these what culture shows that is of note. Um, but then my favourite thing about that show wasn't winning the tag belts on that show. The cage, it, the, it's a triple threat cage match between. Oh, the blue uh, one. The blue one, right? And it's the first yeah. time they used it. Um, so I was, I was head of ring crew in a sense of like, I made sure that like all the staging and stuff like that went up, and then like HD Drake did the ring. But I was in charge of getting that ring, that cage up. So we practiced it a couple of times, um, and then it was just like, right, okay, we've got as much time as Cody can stall for, and this promo to get this cage up. And I think the official time it took to get up was like 11 minutes. And like, it wasn't like an easy like slot in. It was like in, ratchet, ratchet to there, make sure it goes into the ground, like trying to traverse around the ring while there's people there. There's not a lot of space. Um, so for me, that was my favourite moment of that night. Not winning the tag belts, but making sure the cage went up. And it stayed up for, um, for the match in 11 minutes. So yeah, that's a, an inside scoop on that. Ooh. So you mentioned there, uh, like Cody again. Um, obviously he they like, manages AEW now. So if there ever came a point where it was like the WWE or AEW, and there was like, oh, you only going to one, what one would you, what one would you choose and go to? Hard question. Um, and I think this has changed over time. So if AEW was a thing when I was in wrestling, like deep and full time. Um, I would have gone towards that because I like I was there when the like the world of sports that thing started to kick up and WWE started the NXT UK and they were just signing up everybody and I was quite ingrained in NGW um, at that point in time um, and I remember being sat there and being like the sign of everybody's contracts to try to kill us sure balls to them like we'll we'll give them something to kill like we will work towards this um, so I think I'd probably end up going like AEW on that end. Now, um, not that I'm knocking AEW because I like the product. I really like the product. Um, and like, I like the WWE product. I think there's bits and pieces that on both of them I, I like and I dislike. But I like a lifetime goal for me has always been I've always wanted to go out to Mania and like be there, but be paid to be there. So it doesn't have to be like a WWE employee. Um, say for example when what culture went out there like I was good that I wasn't on that because I was like that could have been like just a tick that I could have just put yeah. in that box and it would be fine um, but anyway that I could get out there and like and be 
paid to go to WrestleMania. I don't want to be on the card. Like, I'm not worried about being the main event, but just to be there and experience it. So that would be easier if I was signed to NXT UK. And also, if they need a strength and conditioning coach further down the line. Neither the guy. guy. Um, so, but yeah, like, on that front, I would probably see, say NXT UK right now. And there's such a... There's such a, a talented bunch that's there, and like the show that they produce is really good. So yeah, I'd probably go that way. But it's not a knock on AEW at all because I do really like their product. Uh, obviously, you, you've competed in a few ladder matches throughout your career. What I just wanted to know is how diff- was it how do I, was it hard going into your first ladder match, knowing how to uh, change it compared to a normal regular one on one. So I'm trying to think of the first ladder match that I did. So there was a couple at WCPW, or there was one or two at WCPW. Like there was a big one that had like Osprey and, and people in it. Um, and I can't remember. I think that was an all string of a show, but I don't think it was. Um, and then I think I was involved in another one. But actually the first time that I did ladder matches was on the camps. So in 2015, um, Mega Slam had somehow managed to get all the Ponyans camps to put a, a a chain on the roof so we could put like a, a belt up there. Um, so the run was every day doing a ladder match, fun. Um, so for me, it took that stress out of it because it wasn't like, oh my God, I'm doing this in front of loads of people. We were doing it in front of loads of people, but it was a family audience. Um, yeah. And it was like, don't break these ladders because these are the only ladders that we have. So if they break now, that's just done. So we had to be really cautious around it, which then meant working the ladder match was easier because we were like, right, okay, we just need to protect this ladder. But then we could still get stuff out of it. So then when it came to the shows, where like WCPW, for example, it was like, right, okay, World of Sport. I did one on World of Sport as well. Yeah. Um, so yeah, on that front, it was like, right, okay, how do we work this for an audience um, that doesn't really know wrestling? Um, but I'd done that already at Mega Slam, so... I'm quite cool and collected when it comes to wrestling. Like, I don't get, like, get super nervous about it. So, for me, those ladder matches were just like, okay, this is a tool. This is how we tell it. Or this is what we're going to do to tell a story. Let's go and tell a story with it. I think that's, I think that's all from us, really. Taylor, if you've got anything else. Yeah. Uh, no, I think that's all from me. Thank you. Thanks so, for having thank thank you coming on and doing this with us. Happy to talk. Always happy to talk to people about wrestling. Yeah, we appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. No problem, all lads. Thank you very much for having me. You're welcome. Man. Welcome anytime. Audience. Uh, yeah, pretty much build up the platform, build up the audience, get some wrestling interviews just to try and pick the brain of a, a wrestler really just to so we can find some insight because we find it interesting really absolutely like i've always found that like for me wrestling is more about the wrestlers than it is like the wrestling like the wrestling's fun and i love the matches but like for me like like the network has always been like what are the documentaries that they've got like the undertaker stuff's been like so interesting oh that was amazing unbelievable and like tough enough was always really interesting for me um, I love Maven, by the way. Maven's rock kick is like, um, but yeah, like tough enough was always really interesting because it was like behind the scenes. So yeah, I completely get where you're coming from, yeah. boss. All right, cheers, lad. I think I am about to be beckoned for tea, so I will leave you on that. Yeah. All right, yeah, thank, thank you, you. Pleasure. pleasure. Thank you. Excellent, cheers, lad. See you later. Thank you very much. Cheers.